I think the challenge for the longest time for the legislature has been how do you have large towns, small towns come together with a compromise that we can all agree upon. Uh, that therefore, we think the best thing is at taking a look at, at the DR, because the DRG, I mean, you have the ability to, to change it or fluctuate it. But if we do that, prorating that, the reality is most of our poorer districts would then get the larger funding. And as you, and as you, go, down the, as you go down the ranking, you become smaller or, or, or less, uh, more economically able, you get less. Uh, but many of the meetings we've already had with a lot of the superintendents, pr primarily in Fairfield County, said that, listen, getting mandated relief would make a big difference. So at the end of the day, you have to have a form that has something in it for everyone. Um, so we think that would work. Now, there's been a question in terms of the Horton versus Mescal decision in, in, in Grand List. It's interesting that you have a Republican and a Democrat here. Uh, I represent the poorest part of Norwalk, all right? We have come from a town similar to, similar to Stanford that has a large Grand List. It's interesting, Representative Wilms here represents a part of Norwalk, more affluent part, but actually New Canaan. So you have a Democrat and a Republican who actually co are coming here to say that, listen, we probably have the greatest diversity if we want to take a look at and probably even what would be differences and what would make sense. And for towns like Norwalk and Stanford, we would actually say that the Horton versus Mescal right now, we're doing 90% grand list and 10% of median income. The last time we looked at this, many of us argue that a town's wealth, a town's wealth should be more so based upon your median income. Because in my town, I have people that have had their homes, whatever, they're house rich, they are cash poor. There's no way that they're going to add more money to our budget. So I've got kids who look just like those in New Haven, Hartford, or other poorer parts of the state who now are not getting properly educated or are given the same kind of resources. So this would make a bigger difference for us. Even if you could take that 90-10 and make it a 60-40, or even if, because the committee has the ability to do it, to say that, listen, we have a few towns, and by the way, if you were to just take a look at the top 25%, the top 25% towns are on the grand list, and those are the bottom 50% in median income, it will come to about 12 towns. We've done carve-outs in other ways, but if we really fully understand it, at the end of the day, we want to educate all kids in the state of Connecticut, and we recognize that poverty is a major indicator that a kid is, le is likely to fail. So we want to take on our responsibility and fulfill the CGF, the CGF mandate. It is better that we actually take a look at leveling the playing field in that way. And those are the 12 towns. And for everybody else, since we're not spending more money, because I'm not asking for more money, we've actually come up with, that's how you'll do the distribution. And I think we think that'll be a fair way. Thank you so much.